Hi there, my name's Keith, and welcome to Keith James Green's Bible Research. In the last video, we covered the subject of the theory of intelligent design, in which I talked about a book entitled Signature in the Cell, which was written by Stephen Meyer, who was a philosopher of science and one of the leading exponents in the theory of intelligent design. And in that book, he says that DNA coding is best explained by an intelligent cause. So tonight, I'd like to further talk about the subject of the theory of intelligent design. And I'd like to begin by asking you a question. Are there any instances in which you know by just looking at something that it has been purposely designed? In other words, it's a result, it must be the result of intelligent design. In other words, just by viewing a particular configuration, can you recognize the part, how the parts and details sometimes have been purposely and intelligently arranged rather than being arranged as a result of random or natural causes, even though you weren't there to see its construction. Well, if you really think about this subject, I believe the answer is yes. There are many, many instances in which we know that just by looking at something, it's definitely been intelligently constructed or designed. Now in the video, in this video, I'd like to go a bit further and I'd like to show you how intelligent design can actually be detected using a tested scientific method and how it can also be used to infer that DNA coding and living cells are the result of intelligent design rather than being caused by some random or natural cause. Now the information I want to present to you tonight is taken from a book entitled The Design Inference and this was written by William Dembski who is a mathematician and a philosopher of science and a contributor also to the theory of intelligent design. I also want to draw upon material from the book I mentioned at the beginning, Signature in the Cell, written by Stephen Meyer. Now to illustrate what I want to talk about, I'd like to now show you a photograph. Now this photograph you see on your screen is the photograph of a rock down in Albany. And this rock looks a little bit like a dog's head, therefore they call it dog's rock. Now if you were to go down to Albany and really have a good look at this rock, because of the lack of resemblance to a dog's head, you wouldn't really attribute this to intelligent design. You wouldn't really say that someone carved it. Rather you would attribute it to some random force, some natural force. Now I'd now like to show you another image. Now this image you see on your screen is a picture of Mount Rushmore in the United States of America. And in this mountain are carved the faces, four faces of former presidents of America. Now in this particular case I dare say that no one in the right mind by looking at these images would attribute this to some random and natural cause. Rather, just by looking at Mount Rushmore, people absolutely know that this is the result of intelligence. It was intelligently carved, even though they weren't there to see it. Now this is just one of millions of examples where you can look at something and it can have such detail and resemblance to something that you know it must, without any shadow of doubt, be the result of intelligent design. But the question is, why? Or how do we know this? 
what is it about Mount Rushmore that causes us to know that it is caused by intelligence? Well, William Dembski has written a book all about this subject, and it's a book entitled The Design Inference. And in this book, he explains a formal scientific method for detecting intelligent design. So in this video, I want to try and attempt to explain what's in this book in very simple layman's terms, because I I'm not a scientist, but I've been able to understand the basic points he makes in his book on a very basic level. Now in his book, he said, before you conclude that something has been intelligent des designed, it has to fulfill three different requirements. Now the first requirement is that the particular shape or configuration must not be the result of a natural law. So you have to rule that out first. Now a good example of something that appears to be designed <coughs> is a snowflake, which you now see on your screen. Now snowflakes appear or have the appearance of design because they look like a piece of art or jewelry, something humans would put together. However, snowflakes, it turns out, are formed by natural law. The hexagonal shape is automatically created when water molecules become or combine to form ice. So natural law determines the result in contrast to just a chance event. It also should be noted that hexagonal symmetric shapes of many snowflakes do not actually resemble so perfectly what you see in photographs. They usually pick the ones that are more perfect. However, they in general do look as though they've been designed, but intelligent design has to be ruled out because they are formed by natural law. And so you can't prove, even though they may have been, you cannot prove that they are a result of intelligent design. Now the second requirement that has to be fulfilled in before you can decide whether something's been designed by intelligence is the object or configuration must have sufficient complexity and therefore must be a sufficiently improbable event to have come about. In other words, it, there must be many other shapes or configurations or outcomes besides the one that actually eventuated. <clears throat> it's got to be, the, the shape it formed must be very improbable. It can't be just a 50-50 chance that this shape was or configuration formed. It's got to be sufficiently complex and therefore a sufficiently improbable event before it can be concluded that it was intelligently designed. However, that's not enough. Complexity, improbability is not enough to establish whether it was designed. For example, there are lots of rocks that have lots of complex shapes that don't look like anything in particular that people will look upon and not consider that they are a result of intelligence, but would conclude the result of random forces. So therefore, there must be a third requirement before it can be determined. And the final requirement is the particular configuration must match or conform to an independent pattern before intelligent design can be concluded. <clears throat> For example, in the case of Mount Rushmore, there is a high degree of detail and complexity in the carvings, but it also matches independent pattern of a face. I say independent because faces or the pattern of a face has existed for thousands of years before Mount Rushmore was carved. Therefore, according to the scientific formula, uh, because there's no natural, no natural law that caused the carvings, there's, uh, because it's a highly improbable event and because it conforms to an independent pattern, it can be concluded that Mount Rushmore was definitely 
result of intelligent design. <clears throat> so the question is now is how does this then apply to a biological life? How can we apply this formula to living creatures? Well, Meyer in his book said that this method can be applied to DNA coding and other features of the cell. And the reason is because it satisfies these three requirements explained in Dembski's book. For example, uh, according to Meyer, there is no natural law that accounts for the specific arrangement of coding in the first hypothetical cell. Secondly, it satisfies the criteria of complexity or improbability because he said that DNA coding that, uh, that had to be necessary for the first life form or the first cell needed to be very complex because even simple cells, the simplest cell known, is extremely complex. So it satisfies that improbability criteria. But thirdly, he says it matches an independent pattern. And that independent pattern is human devised coding. For example, the way DNA functions to provide instruction for the cell to assemble three dimensional body parts matches how manufacturing industries use coding to assemble three-dimensional mechanical parts such as aircraft parts etc. In fact it's only because humans know independently what coding is that DNA can be recognized and is recognized as coding. But besides that Meyer says that there are many other complicated features in the cell that match independent design features already used by software engineers. These include design strategies for processing, storing, copying, organizing, accessing, and editing information. Now that's just a few examples of how features in biological life match independent patterns. And therefore, according to Dembski's scientific formula, infer an intelligent cause. Now I hope that gives you just a basic layman's understanding of the subject. The book is far more complex and goes more deeply into science and mathematics and I thoroughly recommend it for people who are inclined to study in that depth. But anyway, leaving all the formal science to one side, Richard Dawkins once wrote in his book The Blind Watchmaker, he said, biology is the, study, is the study of complicated things that give the appearance of having been designed for a purpose. He then proceeds to go on and try and explain how they haven't been designed by intelligence and tries to attribute what you see to natural causes. <clears throat> but I say, when you study the detailed ingenious way that various biological systems have been purposely constructed, to merely say that they appear design is a gross understatement. To me, they look exactly like they were designed. And in that regard, I say, if it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, acts like a duck, got the internal organs of a duck, chances are it's a duck. Well, that's all for now. Until next, bye, next time. Goodbye from Keith James Green's Bible Research.